Hi guys, Brand here, and welcome to a different kind of video today. Today we're doing another one of those uh, match reviews, and it's been a really, really, really long time since I've done the last one, hence uh, me having to pull back out the green screen, because the last time, last time I did one of these, I used the green screen, and I haven't used that thing in like... <laughs> like six months. I don't know. It's it's been a long time. It's uh it's it's uh it's been a long time since I've uh, actually used the uh, green screen. So <laughs> it was fun breaking that out. Not so much trying to get it look to get it to look moderately good. Obviously, it still doesn't look good, but it looks good enough because uh, I, I I've been fighting with it for quite some time. But yeah, um. It's cool, kind of nostalgic to have the green screen back here, uh, back behind me. But yeah, uh, we're gonna be doing a match review from Sam. Sam sent me this uh, match. Sam wanted to know what they did wrong uh, in this match, and this is gonna be a little bit of a different one, because usually when people send me match reviews, they send me uh, a full match. Uh, this is a match in progress, and as you can see, we already have uh, two hooks uh, on the board already, which is kind of like, you know, to me, two hooks at three gens does not mean things are going poorly. That means like, you know, you kind of had a slow start, but like things haven't gone too terribly. Like you still have a lot of wiggle room to make something happen, especially with two people on the hooks at the same time. There's a lot of circumstances where unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately just, you know, uh, proxy camping is probably the right move here, <laughs> you know, cause you can pressure both saves at the same time, which is an incredibly powerful move. But let me stop ranting and actually, you know, Watch the darn thing. I think that would probably be the best course of action. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay. So you got two people on hook, like I said. Uh, pretty sure they're just going for the save right now, or at least they should be. Okay, you got Jane coming for the save here. Uh, another person coming for the save here. Lag spike there. Not really your fault, to be honest. Uh, you hit the guy on hook, which is, or you get, you get. You get hit with the the good old wonderful uh, <laughs> uh, invincibility thing that's been a thing for I don't even know how long now. There's just an issue now that some people just get iframes when they get off hook. Uh, behaviors not addressed it, not fixing it to my knowledge. So that just kind of sucks. Um, the way I found to be around that is just like be patient. I know it's hard because you were in that situation with Blight, but like you know, if you wait a second, you can wait out the iframes. Um, but yeah, that that was just kind of like the game doing something dumb it shouldn't have. But you know, in regardless, you know, the way around that would be to uh, the way around that would be to uh, wait a second. So she's going for the next save. Uh, Adam, oh not Adam, uh, Dwight, Dwight, God, yeah, Dwight, Dwight Fairfield, yes, <laughs> going for this save. Um, you kill him. Um. Um, obviously that's just like, that's obviously just like Blight things, like, you know, you probably could have hit that if you were just like, you know, a little bit more glued to Blight and a little bit more into the, the, the Blightism and the Blight things. Um, so obviously I don't think I need to tell you that, it's just like, you know, practice more with the, the, the rushes. But I think in that situation, in that situation, uh, what I would have done, especially since you have so much pressure already, is you decide to go out, so you... Take down Dwight right here, like right in front of, uh, right in front of the Steve. But instead of going for Steve, who's like literally out in the open, which is what Blight excels at, is catch people out in the open. You go for, um, you go for Jane, who's in less of an less of an open area, got a lot of stuff in the way. So you end up bouncing a, b a bunch off of a bunch of stuff and not really like hitting her. Now, obviously, the the, the point here is like, oh well, he might have BT. I'm like. But he also might not. <laughs> and if he doesn't, that's a double slug already. And if he doesn't, he's got to go mend. And Jane's still over here, right? And you're blight. Like you're the fat. You're you're literally like the fastest character in the game. And you can ignore, you can enact the like. You also have the speed out on as well. Like you literally, you are in a fantastic position right now. A fantastic position. Um, I would have tested to see if that that homie had BT. Because if he doesn't, then. You know, if he doesn't have BT, you just kind of, like, get another slug, and then you can go down Jane anyway. But now you're just, like, you know, Steve's got away, and now you're entering a long chase with Jane. That shouldn't be happening, you know. So, that's what I would have done. Okay. She fakes the window. He vaults. Oh, because you have Bamboozle. Um... 
I know it's Bamboozle. I know you're trying to get value out of your perk, but L wall, T walls are weak enough that you don't need to vault with Bamboozle in an L wall, T wall. Vault, like the point of Bamboozle is to force pallet drops, right? Um, and that would be at like jungle gyms of like the long wall jungle gym, uh, L wall jungle gym, that sort of thing. The whole point of Bamboozle is to force pallets early. Um, but blocking windows is like how you do it. Um, L wall, T walls are like weak enough to where like a simple mind game will do the trick. Um, and I know, you know, BIM comes with the uh, initial, like the extra vault speed, but I, I wouldn't have vaulted that. That's a, that's a, that's a time waster. I would just have done a mind game and tried to catch up that way. Let's see. Like, well, okay, I want to say this first, cause you know, some of these people are like me, like dude, like you're being like really like harsh. Uh, I'm just pointing out things that I would do differently. Like, I'm not saying everything I'm doing is the perfect way or like, you know, you know, Sam's doing everything totally wrong. I'm just saying like, you know, they've asked me to, what would I do in this situation instead? Well, what do you think I did wrong compared to what you would do? So that's just what I'm doing, so. Okay. So they lit a boon, so they're probably gonna go all heal up because of circle. Um, that's so uh, all those people that got away are doing something. You notice somebody else is around, you look around, make sure there's no beamer save or anything going on. So you pick up. Um, without really knowing where that other person is, you really can't go slug. Well, obviously that would have been optimal, because they were, those. yeah, they're all healed up now. Which is why Circle of Healing is not a fair perk. <laughs> like, look, you went from, you went from a two-hook situation, you went from a two-hook situation, everybody injured, to everybody's in a full reset because of one perk. Wowee, cool. Which would be fine if there was some way to get rid of it for, not even permanently, but like for a while, like some sort of cooldown, but you know. This isn't a story about, or this isn't a video about Circle of Healing. AKA, or TLDR, I'm just telling you that there's nothing you can do there. Okay, so he gets the unhook there. He runs, vaults the pallet. You gotta am all yours, so you're gonna... Ooh, that was just a good play by him. That was not you. That was just, that was just Steve being good. <laughs> that was Steve just knowing what to do. Did you not hear that gen being worked on, like, over here? Because you had pop several times and you never went over to that gen. Did you just like want to chase? Because this is something I do. I, I'll like, I'll want to chase instead because it's like the fun part of the game. I'm like, no, I'm chasing instead. But then gens go off and I get mad. So like, if you heard that, that is the priority. With pop, yes. Um, if you have pop or ruin active, the priority is always the gen. No matter like how, like essentially that Steve was going to mess up and get downed either way because A, you're blight and B, you know, you had I'm all ears so you could kind of just like play that, that tile however, like, as efficiently and as great as you want. Um, but, um, if you heard the gen being worked on, especially with, like, pop or ruin, you need to, you know, you need to go use your perk. <laughs> because as much as it sucks, uh, you're called killer, but your real objective is the gens. Uh, stopping the gens is, like, your number one thing. Um, and that's priority one over, <laughs> over even the chases, which is the fun part of the game, unfortunately. So, that time you prioritize chase over gen, and, um, you know, he just, you know, it didn't work out. So Jen got done. Even just kicking it just to get it regressed so they have to waste more time is helpful. So, yeah. You're taking him back here, which I like. I like. This is a really smart plan for this, uh, for everybody at home. This is very, very smart because you're taking him back here because there's no tile back here. There's nothing. This is just a big dead zone back here. So you're just, like, taking him back here where, like, everybody, everybody on the team has to go way out of their way to do anything here. And it's still not too far away for you that you're, like, losing progress in the game, you know? So he's on second. Okay. Yeah. That sucks. Without the context of the rest of the game, I can't figure out what you could have done with that or if you could have done anything. Obviously, popping that other gen, I, I know you could do. Okay, so right now you're, I guess, proxying this person? Yeah, you need to, like, use your pop. What are you doing? <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, use your pop, push him off. Um... Okay, you're proxying this person to death, but somebody's literally trying to work on a gen right behind you. Okay, you're- I get what you're trying to do. You're trying to confirm a, je a death, but you're at one gen. You're at one gen. You can't afford to force a death here. Like... Like, you- Okay, you- you, I know you're trying to force a death here. 
Because you needed somebody dead like a gen ago. But like you literally let somebody start a gen while you had pop active and did not you li you literally had pop active, let a gen get started behind you and did not stop it. Like like gen gen first chases and deaths later. Like like you like the name of the game in DBD is like stopping gens. Um, I'm seeing this pop down here go like all the way down the timer will go all the way down multiple times multiple times multiple times like like you brought a slowdown one of the best slowdowns in the game top three slowdowns in the game and you aren't using it and gens are flying around you and i'm watching that pop like go over and over and over and continuing to run out without use uh so that's i think that was like a big reason why this goes wrong yeah and that time you didn't yeah, because now now he's just saved, right? Because because like you tried to face camp him, but you didn't do it efficiently. Uh, the whole team showed up, and you couldn't get around that Dwight there because that that was just them making a good play. I don't think that was really you. Um, the the Dwight body blocking between the tree the tree there. Um, so now they got him off anyway. So you just kind of like tried to face camp somebody, and it just didn't work. Okay, she had dead hard. That's not your fault. That's just Perk Gober. I brought a perk into the game, and now I win. You know. It's dumb. Yeah, don't take that chase and fun bus. <laughs> Do not take that chase and fun bus. Not in this part of the game. That 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 would be death. Fun bus is, way, is a very strong perk. Strong perk. Strong, uh... Uh... Area. So you don't want to mess with that. Not at one gen. So you're gonna get pop again, and I really hope you actually, you know, do something with it this time. Okay, so you have two gens started. You have a gen over to your left and a gen to your right. He just started this one. And this Ash. I don't know how much progress he has. Uh, don't rush in small, confined areas like that. I've seen, like, really godlike blights with, like, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of time invested in the character, like, be able to do stuff like that. But if, like, if you're, a uh, if you're in a tight, compact space, blight is more than likely more than not just gonna bump off of everything and you're just gonna like waste time so um i don't think there was a reason to do that there just like for just like force the pallet drop or something just don't try to do anything fancy so she's on second now so now you're split between two gens which is good because like you know you have pop goes the weasel once again pop didn't get used um yeah, I think that's the big thing here. That's the main thing I'm noticing. Like, if there's going to be a TLDR from this, is like, you let pop... You, you have multiple gens next to each other that you're trying to pressure, and you have a gen pressure perk that you're not using. You're not kicking these gens. Yeah, that's 25% of their progress. That is that is a lot of progress to lose. Um, and you're just not doing it. I don't know if you're, like, you're just, like, in the thrill of, like, you're just stressed of... <laughs> trying to not lose the match or like you're like in the thrill of you know chasing people but like you're letting like one of the top three perks in the game that you brought with you just mean nothing sprint burst once again strong perk go bear that's not your fault he throws that probably good to get that out of the way since it's right next to that gen um otherwise i wouldn't think so yeah he's running into nothing he's trying to pull you away from the nice gen pressure situation you have so taking this chase is not good. Not good. Okay, you realize this though. You realize this though, you come back. Um. Okay, you hit him. Good good hit. Good shit. That was a really good hit. Uh yeah, fun bus is just really strong. Oh, he leaves it. What? Ash, are you okay? <laughs> Ash, you he's leading you away from the gens as well. Because they're trying to do the top two gens. So he's trying to lead you away. You weed out the dead hard, cool. Now, do you use your pop this time? One pop this time. One pop this time. Do you use your pop? Because you you needed to a long time ago. You have you have everybody death hook, but like nobody dead. Okay, good. See, like this situation that you're doing, oh, you, homie, you don't have, homie, you don't kick the gen. You don't kick the gen. That's why you lost. That right there. Like, you've had multiple uses of pop and you're not kicking your generators. That's it. That That's why. That's that's what you did wrong there. Yeah. And you could have... This gen! This gen! So what are we at? 618? This gen right here? This gen right here. 
when this whole situation happens, when you're trying to face camp, look, look who was back here. Look what was happening when you were trying to face camp that, uh, that person on hook. You're trying to face camp this person, and you have active pop at three, at three minutes ago, three minutes ago in this match. You have pop active. They start the gen that wins the match while you have pop active. And how many more times do you have pop active? C618. How many more times do you have pop active before that gen goes off? Okay, so I know that you don't kick anything with this one for sure. That I do know for sure. That's why I watched the footage back, because I didn't know if I was misremembering things. See, you not kicking there is devastating. Yeah, so so essentially you have two pops that you don't use. Um, so that's uh, pretty... Uh, oh, did I go on slow mode? No, this is normal. It just feels strange after... Uh, it's just really strange to see normal speed after uh, everything. <laughs> Yeah, so at this point, like, the game's, like, a sunk cost. At this at this point, like, the best thing you can do is either just chase somebody on Deathhook like Steve and get your free kill, or, uh, get, like, Dwight, who probably isn't on Deathhook, and, like, you know, bait him for extra saves on people that are Deathhook. Yeah, this literally looks like it's in slow-mo. <laughs> They got that door done quickly. They were probably on- they were probably in comms, or at least two of them were. For them to be on the door that quickly after- after, uh... For them to be on the door that quickly, like, after getting that gen done, at least two of them were together. Or were communicating somehow. That- that guy was a CTV, so they might have been- even if they weren't in comms, like, on stream together, and be like, Hey, yo, they were watching that stream get done. Um, so... TLDR for this match, uh, first thing for you, first thing for you is you had, you had multiple Pop Goes the Weasels active, and you didn't use them. If you're going to bring a slowdown in the second strongest uh, slowdown in the game under Ruin, um, you got to use it. You just have to. Um, especially, you are, you are the fastest character in the game. You are Blight. You are the fastest character in the game. And you have two gens that are literally right next to each other. You have one by Fun Bus over there to your left, and you have this gen to your right. You are... Do you, are they in a three gen? Do they have another option? They're in a three gen. You have Pop Goes the Weasel playing the third best character in the game, the fastest character in the game, and you lost a three gen. I'm not saying that as like, how dare you, you're terrible. But that is an incredibly advantageous situation in your favor. And you hooked people multiple times in the middle of this three gen. You had every advantage, but you didn't capitalize on it. Because I think the other big thing that I think that I noticed here that was like a big time waster that got that gen done is when you go to hook Steve here, you don't pressure the other gens. You don't pressure the gen directly behind you while somebody hops onto it. Like right here, this baffled me. Not as like a how dare you sort of thing, but like this one I was like, yep, that is, that is, Ring ring! I'm like, oh, that was one. That was a bad thing that I was like, oh, that that was not the play. Cause like there's nothing like contrary to popular belief, camping somebody to death on hook, especially second hook, is not illegal, not bad. But as but you know, especially in this situation where you know everybody's all around, right? You know. But somebody you have pop active and somebody starts the last generator of the match that the generator that ends up winning the match. Uh, right behind you and you don't do anything about it because you said I'm gonna I'm going to camp this guy but you're not you're not actually face camping him you're like 10 yards away like you are really far away from him you're giving them so much space back here to come up and and get the save which is what they end up doing they coordinate a save together and they they get him out through body blocking so you're not committing to the save and you're not at all interested in uh, diffusing the gen behind you uh, either. So you're not pressuring the gen and you're not really pressuring the hook. You're just kind of in this situation of like, the match is going south and I don't know what to do, so I'm going to try to do both things at the same time. And it's very clear, uh, like I said, I have I have not, I, th this is a weird one because we've started the match midway, but I'm sure there's been hints throughout the game that like, especially since there's a TTV in the lobby, no offense to TTVs, but they usually run with a crew. You know, a lot of TTVs don't solo because soloing is, is hard and difficult. And it's more entertaining for them if they win, right? Um, 
So you, at some point, probably caught on the fact that either two, three, four people, they're at least stacked together, and they may have cons. They may be in a swift. So decide and being indecisive in at at any point in this game is not something that they are doing on the other side. They are going to have decisiveness because there's four people talking to each other, or at least two, or they're all stacked in his stream and they're chatting with him through text whenever they can, but they're coordinated somehow, right? They're coordinated. Um, so you here are not face camping to prevent them from, you know, coordinating, which they end up doing and getting the save, but you're also not pressuring the gen behind you, so they're just splitting on the gens, which should not be something they're able to do in a three gen against the third strongest character in the game. This this was what lost you the game right here. Not using your pop, not using that pop right there to end that gen right away, and not committing to camping this guy. Because, like, that would have been fine, you know? If you had, if you had, if you had, like, walked up there and, like, hard face camped him, you would have lost the gen. That's just it. What you should have done was, when Dwight got that gen started, whack it. Out of here. Delete the gen. Go stand in front of Steve. Because when you go stand in front of Steve, they may they may duo on the gen over there in the top left. Uh, but, you know, Steve dies. Steve's out of the game. Not a factor anymore. You go, you chase someone. Uh, both of them are on death hook. Because uh, I think they, at this point in the game, the Jane and the Ash are like over there and Dwight's behind you. Um, I would find Dwight if you could. Hook him so you can risk a risky save situation with the other two. If that's not possible, you should have gone and, you know, taken down Ash or Jane so you at least can have a 2k. And if they mess up or screw up, slug someone, make it a 3k. Because I think you're, there's a lot of this match which is, I think, is why you sent it to me. A lot of it is, like, it is just Swift stuff. Like, like them, like, them coordinating the save, like, like, I, like, this is really coordinated. He body blocks? <laughs> he literally body blocks between the hook and the tree, so you can't grab him. Either he's a genius, or he's in on it, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, if he's not in comps, like, that was a good play. Like, that's just a smart, that's smart play, but that's, like, really good coordination on their part either way. Um... Like, a really, really good coordination on their part, like, either way. Um, it, and, like, good for them. Good for them for that. Um, but if you had, you know, actually face camped, like, committed to face camping, n comms can't stop that, <laughs> right? Like, they can do their best, but as long as you're, like, patient, uh, like, th th they can't stop you from face camping them. Like... But now you're in the situation where you're just like taking the hits you can and you can't you can't down people quickly and they have because they are you know sweating and want to win they have all the strong perks so they're nullifying you and it's it's just you know it's uh something you know but yeah thank you so much for sending this match uh once again tldr uh if you have your pop use it especially in like a three gen situation and secondly like uh you you were just indecisive. If you were gonna face camp the Steve, you should have face camp the Steve. Uh, if you're gonna like pressure the gens, you should have pressured the gens. You were in this weird zone where you were trying to do both, but not really committing to either, um, and just kind of like letting opportunities slip because you were trying to do both at the same time and juggle too much. Um, but yeah, that's that's all. That that would be the, that was the only two things I saw. Like a lot of a lot of this, a lot of this, dead hard sprint burst, good coordination that you can't help. Like. That is why it's the stronger side. <laughs> like, you know, but there was a lot that you did wrong in this scenario as well. So the 50-50 there, that, that's your 50. That That's what you did in this situation. So hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that's something you can uh, carry into your next matches. Hopefully you guys are watching this who aren't, you know, aren't, aren't the blight player. <laughs> aren't the person behind the wheel here. Uh, also learn some things in terms of just like general game advice and, uh, things to do and bad things to do and good things to do on both sides of this equation so yeah thank you so much for watching friends hope you enjoyed this video uh and found it helpful if you do please like it and give me a sub -aroni. Uh, we're almost at 1k which is pretty freaking crazy um that is the that is the big holy grail right that's like where everybody wants to be is at that oh, 
1,000. Yeah, that's where everybody wants to be. So we're almost there. Home stretch. So I appreciate all of you that have done that so far. And if you are not subbed, maybe consider it. Yeah. Thank you so much, friends. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow in the next video. And if I don't, I will see you when I see you. Goodbye. <laughs>